Hey guys, Leslie here, and today I want to talk to you about a really awkwardly named molecule that can promote pigment in your hair, and I'd like to talk to you about how it does that. So, as many of you may know, I also, in my spare time, have a supplement company called Oxford Healthspan that makes a supplement called Primadine to put you back into the new prime of life after the age of 50. And uh, it really uh, is made up of a very awkwardly named molecule called spermidine and a prebiotic to help you make more spermidine. There are also some other polyamines called spermine and putrescine, which are part of a virtuous recycling feedback loop so that you can make more internally. And spermidine is really necessary for human life. All plants and animals make it. Um, it's in very high quantities in semen, also in human breast milk, and it is uh, something which is in very high quantities in the healthy centenarians around the world. So we can measure their uh, serum plasma levels. Now, I brought this supplement to market because it wasn't available in the United States where I wanted my mom to be able to take it. And I really wanted her to have it for the, um, you know, the ability, its ability to slow different hallmarks of aging, everything from, uh, you know, the shortening of telomeres to uh, mitochondrial and stem cell dysfunction. So we know that spermidine inhibits all of those pathways. So six out of the nine pathways to be exact. But I was not prepared for various people to report to me, clients, that actually spermidine appeared to be repigmenting their gray hair. So um, I'll just show you a few photos. So here's one of someone who has, she's demonstrating not only new baby hair growth, but in her original blonde hair color. And here's, that person is over 50. Here's someone who is nearly 60 who had gone, you know, blonde, it basically had gone gray or white and was sort of doing a blonde wash. Um, but they are now getting uh, hairs back, new hairs in the original color. And here's another person who's closer to 50 who, uh, you know, has basically taken a photo. So you can see the hair up here, which is older and the hair at the root, which is now getting darker. Um, this person is 92, and I find this quite remarkable because this person is basically white-haired. But if you look very carefully, you can see that there are these new black hairs coming in. And that is uh, not just in that spot, but on the, the back of the head, Again, here, I don't know if you can see, there are a few more just in here. Normally you'd say, well, that's not really, that's not really very interesting, but that person is 92. So that is what I think is remarkable. And then they got more sort of diffuse new hair growth um, at the top of their head, which was balding. So probably the most dramatic results were from a 79 year old. And if you look carefully here, you can see what has happened. It looks like an Alice band across the top of their head. It's so dark. And um, now actually that they, you know, they'll be able to cut off the white ends, but it's so different to what we have seen during lockdown where most people had these white stripes, uh, you know, at the roots it was white and at the ends it was dark. So here's another close up of that. You can see how it's all coming in dark, but it's white at the end. So what is going on here, right? I had to really think carefully about this. And I have said before that we do know from studies in in vitro studies, that means in a little Petri dish with human hair follicles, that if you, um, if you subject them to spermidine in the Petri dish, that something like a quarter of those hair follicles, more than a quarter, will actually go back into the growth phase known as the antigen phase after just six days. And during the antigen phase is the time when pigment, pigment known as melanin, is produced. So if you are not, if your hair follicles are not in the growth phase, they are not going to be producing pigment. So we knew that, but I happened to come across a really interesting study on 
spermidine enhanced free polyamine levels. And this had to do with rice. So this is actually a study, um, an agricultural study. And they're looking at how, um, how polyamines with rice who are who I can't say who with rice, which, <laughs> which are subjected to heat stress, um, do better in the presence of spermidine. And the reason why is because you'll see here, it is because it increases the amount of catalase and superoxide dismutase, two antioxidants that the rice needs to uh, protect itself from high temperature heat stress. So I thought about this, and I know that all plants and all animals make spermidine. Uh, it's just a natural part of life. And if it actually increases these two antioxidants, SOD, superoxide dismutase and catalase, then it makes sense that it might do the same in mammals, humans. And if that's true, that could be one of the reasons why all of these people are actually having their hair repigment. And why is that? Well, if you've watched any of my other videos, you may have heard me talk about hydrogen peroxide in the hair follicle, how when we have stress, um, we produce adrenaline and the adrenaline has nowhere else to go once our fight, flight, or freeze moment is over. Normally we'd run it off, but we don't run it off anymore. We sort of sit in front of a laptop, get stressed by the news, and the adrenaline doesn't go anywhere. So the body gets rid of it. In the body's wisdom, the body gets rid of it by turning it into hydrogen peroxide. And hydrogen peroxide, exactly the same hydrogen peroxide that you would bleach your hair blonde with, needs to get out of the body somewhere. So it's gonna go out through the skin and it's gonna go out through the hair follicles and literally bleach your hair from the inside out at the follicle. But if superoxide dismutase and catalase and glutathione levels are high in the liver, those three antioxidants will actually turn the hydrogen peroxide into harmless water, which the body will just excrete out. So, I've mentioned there are these three antioxidants that the liver makes, glutathione, superoxide dismutase, and catalase. They're all very important, but these two, superoxide dismutase, SOD, and catalase, they're really hard to supplement with. So in all my other videos, you hear me saying supplement with glutathione. But it looks like, based on this study, that it is possible, possibly, to supplement with spermidine and that that will increase your endogenous, your internal production of superoxide dismutase and catalase to help stop the hydrogen peroxide bleaching your hair from the inside out. I hope this video was useful. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll answer the ones asked in the first seven days. And if you like this video and want more like it, please hit the subscribe button below. See you next time.